Hi. Can, am I too loud? <laughs> okay, um, so this is actually a photo that I took and posted in 2015 um, on Instagram of myself. Um, so what it says there in terms of caption was, uh, after 10 years of building, I'm back to square one, what did I do wrong? So that was actually a reflection at a point of time when um, I stood outside my toilet and I asked myself, really, um, why did all these things happen to me? And I think after two years, um, that's the title of what I'm talking about today, which is discovering why. I think after two years, I finally managed to understand why did all these things happen to me? And I think uh, that's what I'm going to share with you today. So this is my life journey. Um, at age one, um, I was actually a champion. So a, a typical joke that a lot of people indicated and said to me is, um, I, that, that, that was me in terms of photo-wise. Um, I, I won the healthiest and cutest baby award at one month. Um, so they asked, what happened to you now? <laughs> Um, so that was me at age one. At age three, um, I think that's where if all of you know and you talk to your parents, typical, you know, um, what they talk about is that for, for male, um, you probably start talking at about nine months or so. For female, probably you start walking at about nine months or so, or the other way around, not too sure. I was actually dumb. Uh, dumb meaning I didn't say a single word until I was age three. So my parents always thought that uh, I'm dumb, I couldn't speak, uh, because I never said ma, pa, or whatever, I, I literally was a very quiet baby. Um, at age three, I actually spoke in sentences. So my parents were shocked because they thought that, well, this dumb baby can actually speak. So I, I think that's where I'm a little bit dumb and a little bit weird. Um, age 21, um, I'm almost, I was a school dropout, almost. Um, why do I say that? Because I actually went to study engineering. I hated my life in engineering. So within six months, I went to study. Um, I spoke to my parents and said, I'm going to quit school. And they said, no. Um, what do you want to do in my life? I said, I know exactly what I want to do in my life. I want to do marketing. I want to go into an uh, agency. That's what I want to do. Um, engineering ain't going get, to get me there. And they obviously said no, and I finished my degree um, by almost copying other people's work all the time. Um, I remember what was interesting about my life in university is my final year thesis. Um, I proved a 30 years formula wrong. So the graph was supposed to go this way. My experiment came out that the graph was this way. And I was like, oh dear, what's going to happen? And I, oops, sorry. I think my hands okay. are too much. Let's leave it here. Then I'll press it. <laughs> oops. So that's, that's where I felt that um, I, I could do a quite a good job as a marketeer. Because I, my whole entire thesis is about how you should write and do experiments and not make sure that the conditions are all wrong. If not, you'll get this kind of results, which is totally opposite. So I did a reflection journal in that sense. Um, so that was me. 24, when I graduated, I was jobless for a year. I was jobless for a year because I was very insistent I wanted to go into marketing. Um, nobody wanted me. I went for countless interviews. And at the point of time when I was a little bit um, demoralized, uh, then I went to go for an interview for a sales engineer job. And the moment, voila, you know, I'm offered a job immediately. I said, no, thanks. And I left. And eventually, I did get a job at Repipe Poly. Um, so at Educational Institute doing marketing. Um, I think the next three years of my life, um, what was interesting is that um, I had a lot of success. Um, literally, at the interview, when I spoke to the, my boss then, I actually told my boss that, uh, hire me and you get three dogs. And my boss was like, huh? And I said that I'll work like three dogs for you. I can do three person's job. I just need that break. So 
I think I was a bit lucky. Uh, they decided to offer me a job. I was there for three years. Um, in that three years, I did fairly well in terms of my ranking. So at 26, I was actually very sure, you know, oh, my road to being owning an agency or being in an agency life, that's what I'm going to do. 27, I think that was when success came very early for me. Um, I was earning a lot of money. I, I, I left my job. I started uh, my own company, uh, doing a creative agency, um, doing extremely well. Um, I didn't have to work a lot of hours. I think one day I was working maybe eight to 10 hours max, and I was drawing easily five digit. Um, I was able to get almost everything I wanted. I bought a house, I changed my car, I was enjoying life, I started picking up golf, and I actually didn't know what I was doing in terms of work because I was having too much fun. Um, and the next nine years, I was basically playing a lot, uh, doing work now and then. Um, and at 38, that was where I became lost and poor. So today I'm going to talk a, little, a lot more about loss and poor. And now I'm 40, uh, I'm back to rebuilding my life. Um, so that's where we are. So like what I mentioned, um, 38, where I'm lost and poor. In a nutshell, um, at a point in time, I had no pay for one year. Um, the bank, my company had a reserves of about half a million. I lost every single cent of that. In addition, I owed 250,000 uh, to vendors. Um, in terms of my personal life, I actually owed another 150,000. Um, key reason for that was because I was going through a divorce then. So I was married, um, going through a divorce, I had to, because of all the financial things that comes with divorce, I have to pay 150,000. Um, I had, imagine you have no pay, your company, everything that was there was gone. Everything that your company has, you still owe, plus you have no cash. Um, it was a very sad point of time. I went to my very rich uncles and I said that, hey, um, would you like to consider perhaps investing a little bit, a little bit in me? Um, the uncles told me to go and look for the banks. And as you all know banks, right? They come to you and offer you money only when you're rich. When you're poor, nobody gives a damn about you because they are, the first thing they ask is, what's your p &L? Oh, it's in the red, sorry, we can't help you. So it was very sad. Um, when I spoke to my uncles, I said that, you know, I really need help. Um, any small amount will do. And all I got was a year full. And they told me that, um, I don't even know why you got yourself into this stage. You're one dumb ass. And they left me for dead. Um, that was how it was at 38. I think it was very uh, demoralizing for me. Um, and at a point in time, I actually really kept asking myself why. I think the questions that I asked, um, half a million, how did it disappear? Half a million is quite a fair bit of money. It's not as if my company was very big. I had about 25 people. Um, half a million, every... So I actually lost money in 2013 and 2014. Every month, my revenue was going up, uh, but my expenses were going up even faster. Um, I didn't catch it, and because I was always holding on to hope. So to me, it was a case of every month, I'm losing $20,000. One project will easily cover it the next time around. So I kept holding on to hope. I held on for two years. So one year, you lose a quarter of a million. Two years, you really lost. Half a million was gone. So in... January 2015, um, I lost another 150,000. In February 2015, I lost another 100,000, simply because the sums didn't add up. Um, so from half a million of cash in the bank, in two years it was gone. In the two months in 2015, I actually lost and owe another 250,000. Uh, and this is in addition to, I have not been paid for a year already at that point of time. And I was really lost. Um, I, I, when I thought about getting money, um, one of my friends offered me 10,000. And I was thinking, oh, 
I can only pay three person salary with ten thousand. <laughs> I don't know what I can do. Um, no amount of money seems enough. Um, and I was responsible for twenty five people's family and their life. Um, it was really sad for me. So um, I took on a hard decision. Uh, I tried to save whoever I could save. So after twenty five, I actually let go of. I left with six, so I let go of 19 people. Um, it was letting go of the 19 that I know I can survive. And to me, it was really a case of what I was clear about is that my personal finance can't be solved if I cannot solve the company's finance. So I let go of everyone, um, projects that I used to be able to do, I no longer can do. It's back to efficiency. Um, I took on photo shoots by myself, I did on projects, uh, I was a one-man show back again, um, a lot of staff were looking for jobs, um, it was really demoralizing and they asked themselves why do I even want to stay on. So I, I didn't have answers to them and a, a lot of them did ask me, 20k a month, how can that even go unnoticed? I said it didn't go unnoticed but it was really holding on to hope. So there was a lot of blame, and especially the 19 people that I had to let go. All of them um, really blame us. Um, and because it was the first time that we were letting go of people, I didn't handle it properly as well. Uh, I remember the first, very first person that I let go, I literally told the person, the company is not doing well, I'm sorry, you're the first to go. Tomorrow you pack, leave immediately. And he said this back to me. I remember his name is Colin. And he told me, I was here for four years. Do I not have any other options? Why can't we write this out together? And I said, no. I took a very hard line approach. I said, no, tomorrow you leave. No questions asked. Now, two years later, I, I told myself that I think all those were wrong. Um, additional things that I talk about in 2014, no, yeah, in 2014, um, August, I bought a Jaguar. Um, I don't know what went through my stupid head. <laughs> I spent 200 over thousand to buy a Jaguar, thinking that you know, it's good to drive a fancy car. Um, I got rid of the car in December 2015, uh, no, December 2014. Well, if you want to lose money, uh, the car is the fastest way to lose money. So in the three months, four months that I owned that car, I lost $50,000. It was just gone like that. Um, I sold off the car. I bought a, a Hyundai Tuscany that had four years gone, uh, four years left, which I'm currently driving now. Uh, it cost me $30,000. <laughs> so to me, it was like, okay, I need a car. I need a car that can move, but I, I need a car that at least I think I will not cry driving it every day. <laughs> so I bought something that I thought was decently cheap, um, okay, and I'm still driving it. And right now, I think my decision for that is, well, I think that was one of my best decisions. Uh, I'm intending to renew COE next year when it's gone. Um, that's my car. Um, and I asked myself as well, uh, I had a marriage. Um, it wasn't working out. It didn't work out in the first place. I didn't even know why I jumped into it. Was it because I put a down payment for a house? I'm not sure. Was it a case where I told I thought that whoa, dating are so capable, right? Maybe you can change the person, and no, also. And these were all the questions that was constantly coming to my head. I literally really had no answers. Let me know if I'm taking too long. Um, okay, two minutes. I'm gonna go very fast. So in the two years of my life, uh, 2015 and 2016, what I actually really did, right, was I lived on $10 a week a meal. I ate fried rice every lunch for one and a half years. I ate fried bihun every meal for one and a half years. I ate three slices of bread plain every single morning. Um, and the, the 
fried rice as well as the fried bee hoon. I cooked it myself. Um, so the ingredients cost cost about ten dollars a week. There about plus the bread. Um, that was how I lived my life. Um, I didn't go to coffee shop and drink coffee. There's no such thing as Starbucks. Um, I drank only three in one coffee. Uh, I took on two jobs. I worked about almost twenty hours a day then. Um, I sold off all my golf equipment. Uh, that fetched me quite a fair bit of money. I. I played games that I know I was able to earn money. So I played mahjong. Uh, I chose who I can play mahjong. Very interestingly, I earned about close to $2,000 from mahjong. Uh, I played golf and my condition for golf is, hey, that's bad. And I make sure I cover that in golf. So that was what I did. Um, in 2015, the whole of 2015, three times because of how demoralized I was, I remember standing in front at the junction of the traffic light and I closed my eyes and I said I can just take one more step and I don't have to face all of this anymore. Every single time that thought came into my head, I took a very deep breath and I thought about my mom. And it literally went this way and I took a step back. And I think that's the reason why I'm still able to be here today. So, I think my learning point is that things happen for a reason. Um, I think all that happened, I, I, I think I am a very arrogant person. Um, I think I think very highly of myself. Um, I think um, I didn't really know how to control and use money when I had. So my learning points were that it's, it's really not about the money. Um, it's not about your ego. It's not about the pride that you have. I think it's really about the humanity. So my parting words for everyone, um, this is a photo that I took with my current wife, uh, So Young, she's behind right now. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Yes. Um, so um, we actually just went to Korea uh, in October. We took this photo in Jeju. And I think the key learning point I have is that pain makes you stronger. Tears make you braver. Heartbreak makes you wiser, but thank the past for a better future. This is Taylor. Thank you. Alright, so we have time for maybe... Uh, Taylor, can you stay oh, on? Yeah. Sorry. Maybe we take one question and then we'll go on to the next speaker and then we'll come back to all the speakers sharing uh, one last FAQ together. So anyone has a quick question that you'd like to ask Taylor before we move on to our next speaker? Any questions for now? Anybody questions? All right, it's all right then, uh, please go your original way before.